What is up you guys? We've brought you another awesome film today. And today's movie starts in the year 2029 and John Connor, the leader of the human resistance against Skynet, is preparing to launch the massive final blow on Skynet, an AI that's decided to kill all humanity as it's calculated them to be a threat. Here we're introduced to Kyle, a person born after Judgment Day. And Judgment Day is the day Skynet decided to kill all humans. There are four movies before this one by the way guys, I urge you guys to check it out. Kyle was saved by John Connor. Connor when he was just 10 and he's been his father figure ever since. Connor sets up two attack forces, one to strike at Skynet's main defense grid in Colorado and a second one led by John and Kyle to infiltrate a Skynet facility in San Francisco and destroy its main core so that humanity can finally prevail. The Colorado team succeeds in taking down the defense grid, then John and Kyle enter into the San Francisco facility to finish off Skynet but they were too late and Skynet has figured out that it was losing and has sent a terminator back in time just before John got there. John finds the time machine and immediately figures out what's happening and explains that Skynet has sent the Terminator back to 1984 to kill his mother, Sarah Connor. And if Skynet succeeds, he won't ever be born and the human resistance will fail. Kyle volunteers to go back and save Sarah and John accepts his request and gives him a photo of his mom. He tells him that this specific Sarah from this timeline is before Judgment Day so she won't be the strong and capable fighter that he thought she was. And she would just be a young woman who works as a waitress. Kyle promises to protect her with his life and gets ready to go back in time. He takes off his clothes as the machine will destroy anything that's not human flesh and just as the machine prepares to send Kyle back, he watches a Terminator put a hand over John's mouth and say, this is not over. And it is at this point that Kyle is sent through time, but as he does, he starts seeing a series of fragmented images, and he sees a younger version of himself celebrating a birthday with his family, and the time looks like before it was Judgment Day and before Skynet. And he then sees a younger version of himself saying that Genesis is Skynet. We are taken to 1984 and the T-800 Terminator arrives in Los Angeles and it was naked and it goes up to a group of gang members and asks them for their clothes. But before he can take it from them, another older version of the Terminator attacks it. And the other side of town, Kyle appears in an alleyway and steals some pants off a homeless man and is then stopped by a police officer and Kyle asks what year it is and the officer confirms that it's 1984. And the officer is then revealed to be a T-1000 Terminator, a modified version of the Terminators which is a lot more powerful and capable into shapeshifting into anyone. It tries to kill Kyle, but Kyle manages to escape and runs into a retail store and while he was there he takes on a few clothes but then is caught by two police officers and they handcuff him. Kyle tries to warn them but they won't listen and just as they were going to leave, the Terminator arrives at the store and kills one of the officers. As the other one named O'Brien and Kyle take cover, knowing this is out of his league, O'Brien uncovers of Kyle and then out of nowhere a truck breaks through the store and knocks the Terminator aside. Sarah Connor then opens the door to the car and delivers one of the most iconic movie lines in history and she says, come with me if you want to live. And as they drive off, Kyle finds out that the original timeline has been altered. Sarah already knows about Skynet and Judgment Day and that he has been sent to protect her. Furthermore, Kyle learns that the Terminator sent from 2029 has already been destroyed by Sarah and the old Terminator that she calls Pops. Kyle freaks out when he sees the old Terminator and tries to shoot it, but Pops knocks him out. And then Pops asks her when she's planning to sleep with Kyle, revealing to us that Kyle is actually her husband and the father of John Connor. I know this is a bit confusing, but it's time travel stuff guys, come on. Anyways, she responds by saying that she first has to fall in love with him. Kyle wakes up shortly after, and the T-1000 Terminator attacks their truck. Pops slows it down by blowing him up, but they know that it's going to come back. They park at an abandoned factory and Sarah gives Kyle the gun and orders him not to shoot Pops and then they go inside and set a trap. But the T-1000 arrives and beats up Pops and it reactivates the destroyed T-800 and T-800 chases Kyle but he manages to shoot off the Terminator's head. Sarah is in a room filled with acid as she waits to set up her trap for the T-1000 but two Kyles appear before her and they both tell her that they're the real Kyle. And since there was no way that she could make sure, she takes a lucky guess and she shoots one of them in the foot. And luckily, it was the T-1000 which morphs back into its cop form. She then tells Kyle to run away and shoots at the ceiling, releasing an acid bath on the T-1000. The Terminator starts melting, but it still moves toward her, but then Pops comes and pushes it back into the acid and fully destroys it. 
After all the commotion, Sarah and Kyle sit down for a discussion, and Sarah explains that Pops was sent back to protect her from the T-1000 back in 1973, which causes a timeline that differs from Kyle's. Pops was programmed to protect Sarah by an unknown person, and he's done that since he was 10 years old. Sarah has been building a time machine and now can use a chip from the destroyed T-800's body, and she plans to travel to 1997 to change the events that would lead to Skynet's initial attack on humanity. But before she can start the machine, Kyle stops her, and he tells her the future and that they need to go back to October 2017 instead of 1997. Kyle explains that what he saw when he time-traveled, and he's convinced that the images he saw are from the new timeline, since he never had those memories in his own timeline before. He believes that Skynet will begin its attack on the year of the altered timeline, which is on 2017 and not in 1997. Sarah hesitates at first and even points a gun at him when he takes the chip out of the machine to stop her. But she agrees when he tells her that something he should not have been able to know, and it was something that her father told her when she was scared. Sarah agrees to go with Kyle's plan and they time travel together while Pops spend the next 33 years preparing for their arrival. We are then taken to 2017 and Kyle and Sarah appear in the middle of a busy highway causing traffic accidents and they are then taken to custody by the police. Pops watches them from afar as he was a few minutes late because of traffic and he follows them to a hospital where they were being treated for injuries. As they wait, Sarah and Kyle learn about Genesis, a soon-to-be-released operating system that will be used on every computer system worldwide. And from this they realize that this is early Skynet. Shortly after their room doors open, and John Connor appears in front of them. He takes them to an underground parking, and just as he goes into the car, he accidentally calls Kyle dad, revealing the truth, and Kyle is pretty shocked, but before they can talk about it, Pops arrives at the scene and shoots John. But John just walks it off like it was nothing, revealing him to be a nanomachine hybrid. Apparently, in 2029, when Kyle left, John was captured by Skynet, and he's been converted to T-3000. And this makes him a hybrid human robot, and John has now been turned into a servant of Skynet, as the process of transformation reprograms his cells, which turns off his human side. John's mission is to ensure the creation of Skynet and secure its rise. John does try to convince Sarah and Kyle to join the machines and be part of the Empire, but unsurprisingly they refuse and a fight breaks out, and John is temporarily stopped by the magnetic force of an MRI machine. The trio then travel to a safe house where Pops was preparing weapons for the last 30 years. They plan to destroy Genesis before it's released, as the next day will have access to billions of people through their devices. Meanwhile, we learn that John has been helping with the creation of Genesis and also time travel. Later that night, John appears at the safe house, and Sarah and Kyle try to escape, and after a wild car chase, they crash in a bridge and they're all arrested by the cops. While awaiting interrogation, they are freed by an older officer, O'Brien, the first cop who saw Kyle back in 1984. He's convinced that they're time travelers, but nobody would believe him. He takes them to the roof where they can get access to a helicopter, but just as they leave, John also arrives at the rooftop. They take off before he could get to them, and he chases after them with another helicopter, and as they were getting close to the Genesis headquarters, Pops jumps onto John's helicopter, causing it to crash. Kyle and Sarah get inside the building and find it empty, and as they go through it, they find a child version of Skynet. It asks them why they want to kill it, but they just ignore him and move on. But a few moments later, we see a teenager Skynet, and it's apparently evolving within seconds. They also figure out that the release date countdown for Genesis has gone down from 13 hours to 11 minutes, and every time Skynet evolves, the timer keeps going down. Kyle and Sarah rush into the basement and plan a bomb, and Pops tries to hold off John, but before they can blow it, John appears behind Sarah and threatens to kill her. But he really can't do that since he won't really exist if she dies. He then jumps onto Pops and beats him up, even breaking off his arm, but with the power of teamwork, the trio managed to stop him, and Pops traps John in the magnetic field of the time machine and tells Sarah and Kyle to run before the magnetic field blows up. Knowing that Pops is sacrificing himself to hold John in the field, Sarah cries and Pops tells Kyle to protect her, and Kyle gives him a nod and he takes Sarah to safety. Kyle and Sarah manage to reach a bunker below the building before the time machine explodes, setting off the bombs and preventing Genesis from ever coming online. The explosion kills John, and Pop's top half of his body is mixed in with some liquid, and this somehow upgrades him to a T-1000 Terminator. Now with only one thing left to do, the trio travel to young Kyle's home, and Kyle tells his younger self about Genesis, ensuring that he would see the memory when he time-traveled the first time. Sarah is relieved, believing that she is now free to choose what to do with her future. They then both stare at each other before kissing deeply, as she chooses to be with Kyle. But before we go in the mid-credits scene, it's revealed that the system 
core of Genesis has survived the explosion, I guess we're gonna see another Terminator movie, huh? Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this recap. Make sure to leave a like, leave a comment, and most of all, subscribe to my channel. I promise to see you guys on my next recap. Love you all. Bye.